I'm Khan from the Flutter team here to talk about handling input in a GenUI app. This video builds on the code shown in another video from my teammate Andrew called Getting Started with GenUI. If you haven't seen that one, consider pausing this video and giving it a quick watch. We've included the link in the video description below. A quick caveat. GenUI is the new hotness, which means this is still an evolving package, so it's possible that some of the API details you see in this video may have changed by the time you see it. First, let's take a look at the app. Our app is a fantastic workout companion. I'm going to ask it to give me a workout. All right, cool. So it's a core strength builder, push-ups, sit-ups, squats, lunges, I hate squats. Please remove them. I only have time to do three exercises today. Okay, so it's updated our workout to push ups, sit ups, and just lunges. Okay, cool. That looks good. And now it's going to walk us through each of the exercises that we're supposed to do. All right, we need to do 15 push-ups. Okay, I'm feeling good right now, so I got 17 of those done in that set. All right, let's hit complete there, and then let's move on to our next workout, or next exercise. Okay, here, sit-ups, 20 sit-ups. Ah, feeling kind of tired, so did not hit my target there. Only did 17 of those. All right, and finally, we've got 20 lunges. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good again. So I got 24 of those out of the target 20. All right, we finished all 24 lunges and completed the workout. Great job, folks. So this app here is GenUI based, meaning that the agent generates not just the content, but also the UI that the user sees, namely this workout card up here that presents you with the full workout plan and each of these reps cards down here that shows you and walks you through each individual exercise. Okay, so input might seem a little intimidating in this context, right? After all, I now have this agent responsible for part of my app, and it has its own idea of state that's a little different from what I might have in a qubit or a change notifier somewhere. Plus, I've got to learn some new tricks for routing information back to the agent when I want to, and it can seem like a lot. The readme for the package up on GitHub has a really good diagram for how all this works, but it's a thorough technical diagram, so it doesn't necessarily do much to tamp down on the intimidation factor nor does this more detailed diagram from the design doc. And if that doesn't do it for you, check out this process diagram. Good luck, me. But this is why we write packages, right? To abstract away this kind of detail and make it so I don't have to get in the weeds. So in the rest of this video, I'm gonna give you the short version, which is this. If you saw the previous video, some of these are already familiar to you. At the top, there's your agent, in my case, powered by Gemini, Underneath that is the content generator, which is the adapter, so to speak, that allows different kinds of agents to plug into the GenUI framework. Next is GenUI conversation, which represents your app's overall interaction with the agent. Then there's GenUI manager. It manages all of the change events that are flying around between the widgets, surfaces, and agent. As for storing state, that's what the data model is for. It's a centralized observable store for all of your dynamic UI states. Widgets are bound to the data in this model. When data changes, only the widgets that depend on that specific piece of data are rebuilt. Sound familiar? Now, if that still seems pretty complicated, there's a way to jump up the stack and just send messages directly into the conversation. Let's try that first. Included in the GenUI conversation class is a method called sendRequest that you can use to introduce multimodal content directly into the conversation and trigger a response. If you saw our previous video on GenUI, you actually saw Andrew use it. At the very end, he created this method in the stateful widget to take text that originates in a text field and send it to the agent, telling it to create a workout plan. So let's start by building on that. I'm going to update the app so it can not only create a workout plan, but also lead me through completing it. Let's get into my editor. Alrighty, and thanks to Booby Magic, now we're in my IDE. So I've taken the code that Andrew had at the end of the last video, and I've updated a few things just to get us started here. Number one, I've updated Firebase AI logic to use Gemini 2.5 Pro. 
And also, remember how earlier on in the video I mentioned that some things might change with the APIs? Well, the package name has actually changed from Flutter GenUI to just GenUI. And so I've updated my pub spec uh, as well here. And finally, um, the last bit of change I've added here is in the system prompt itself. So we go down, it generates a workout card, similar, say almost same as the prompt from the last video. So here, what we have is the key part to getting the user interaction to work, right? So step number two says, stop and wait for a confirmation from me. Do not proceed until I indicate the workout plan is acceptable. So now the agent knows to expect user input. And notice how I'm explicitly telling the agent to stop and wait for a confirmation. So now we can continue using the same text field at the bottom of the app to ask for a new workout and request changes using that send request method that we talked about earlier. All right, let's jump over to the app and test this out. Okay, here we have the demo running. Let's ask for a new workout. All right, let's see what our agent comes up with. Okay, 20 push-ups, 20 crunches, 20 squats, and 20 lunges. That's called the full body blast. Okay, I don't have enough time to do that. And let's see what it does. All right, so it looks like what it did was it just got rid of the last set of exercises that we're supposed to do there. Cool. All right. Um, that looks good. I have enough time to do that. All right. And let's see what happens next. Okay. Let's start with 20 push-ups. Let me know when you're done. Okay. Now let's go back to the prompt and add one more piece. So I'm going to add one more step in between step two and three here. So actually I'm going to paste it in. Uh, and so this step here will tell the agent that it will lead me, the user, through each of the exercises in the plan, one at a time, beginning with the very first. So it brings in this concept of this reps card. The idea is to show each exercise as its own card in the app so that it's more understandable and more easily uh, followed by the user. Let's go ahead and jump down and add a reps card widget so that our agent can show a card for each individual exercise that we need to do along with the corresponding number of reps. And so just like with the workout card, first we need to define the reps card schema. And then after we've defined the properties, we also want to define that all four of these values are also required. So we can do that here. Okay, next, let's go ahead and define our reps card widget so that we can populate it with the information that comes from the reps card schema here. So I'm gonna make a stateful widget, not a stateless widget, and I'm gonna name it reps card. I'm going to jump down here and add just one piece of state that we're not going to use right now, but it'll be useful to have in our next segment here. So I'm going to add that. There. And then down here, we're going to add and did update to widget. And here what we're going to do is We're reusing the widget with a new exercise, so reset the count basically there. And I'm gonna paste this in here. Okay, so now we have the build method. And we have a reps card that will show the exercise name, the number of reps, and the instructions for the workout. And next, what we're gonna do is define the reps card catalog item so that we can give it to GenUI so that our agent knows it exists. All right, so here is our catalog item. Okay, so essentially here uh, is the code for the widget builder, the function that's responsible for returning our actual reps card 
widget. So here, what is happening is we're pulling all the relevant data that is associated with this particular item from the data model using the item context and returning a reps card widget with all of the values here filled in. So for example, the exercise name, the instructions, number of reps, and whether or not the exercise has been completed. And you can see we are returning a reps card with all of that data filled in. So we've defined a reps card schema, we made a reps card widget, and now we have the reps card catalog item. There's one important part that we need to get this working, and that is gonna be letting GenUI know that this widget actually exists. And what I'm gonna do is just add our reps card catalog item. All right, and so that's it for the reps card. Let's jump over to our demo and actually test it out. Okay, cool. Looks good. All right, it says push-ups 15, start in a plank position with your hands shoulder width apart, lower your body until your chest is close to the floor, then push back up. All right, done. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, lower your hips as if sitting in a chair, keeping your chest up and back straight. Done. All right, step forward with one leg and lower your hips until both knees. Complete. All right, congratulations on finishing your workout. You did a great job. Okay, so we're getting close now. I've got a way to accept the workout plan and the agent's ready to display a card for each exercise. But I'd like some buttons on those reps cards so I don't have to keep typing. Also, I don't always do exactly as many reps as planned. Sometimes it's a slow day and I might do less. Sometimes I've got my YouTube music playlist of 2010's Pop Blasting and I do more. Hey, don't worry, you are my own. You down, 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 down. I'd like to make my refs card take input from me as I complete each exercise. How can I record that as I go and send that info up to the agent? The answer is by using the rest of the stack. GenUI Manager offers my widgets the tools they need to send events with context back up the chain to my agent. Let's get back into an editor and I'll show you how. All right, we're back looking at our reps card schema just like I promised. So up next, I'm gonna add two new properties. Number one is number of reps completed and an action named complete action that is gonna be executed when the user completes a particular exercise. Next, I'm gonna jump down to our reps card widget here and I'm gonna replace our exercise instructions with three new buttons. So let me jump down here to where we were using our exercise instructions. So instead of our exercise instructions, I'm going to add these three new buttons here. So our first button here is going to be an icon button that is going to increase the number of reps completed. Second button is going to be, you guessed it, a down arrow button that then decreases the number of reps completed. And then the last icon button is going to be a button that calls an uncompleted callback with the number of reps that have been completed for this particular exercise. All right, so there you go. We have uh, new buttons in our reps card along with a callback. So here in the reps card catalog item that we defined earlier, we can see in the widget builder that the reps card has a red squiggly line because it requires on completed, but we've not provided one. So the first thing we have to do is get that action that we defined earlier. So how do we get it? So we're gonna say final action, and then from that JSON that exists, uh, we're gonna grab complete action. Remember that, sound familiar? And then, so that's gonna be a JSON map. All right, so let's go ahead and define our on completed callback. All right, and so that's gonna take the number of reps. Essentially here, if the action is null, then we don't do anything. However, if it does exist, what we wanna do is grab the action name and the context definition. And in this case here, you can think of the context definition as the data that the agent is expecting from our app when this particular action gets executed. Now then from there, we'll get our resolve context by calling <laughs> resolve context. 
And resolve context is basically populating the context definition fields with any relevant data that's available from the GenUI data model. And finally, on our resolved context, we'll add a little piece of data called number of reps completed, and it sets it to that local reps count that was passed into the callback from earlier up here. So now when the agent receives this data, this number of reps completed, it knows to pay attention to it thanks to the complete action description that said our app would be providing the number of reps completed by the user as the number of reps completed. And so from there, we'll just call dispatch event, which then means that GenUI will wrap up all that data and ships it to our agent. And so that's about it. Let's go ahead and try out our app. So now you notice down here where the instructions were, it now says reps completed 15, along with up, down buttons, and a check mark. So let me go down, that decreases, and this will increase the number of reps. Let's say I did 17, it's a really good day today. So I did two more push-ups than I'm supposed to. Cool, uh, squats, 20, Ugh, those are really difficult to do. I only got to 18. All right, and then the last one is 15 lunges, and I just did 15 of those. All right, we've completed the entire workout. Great job. But wait a second. This app doesn't look like the one that we saw earlier on in the video. That's a good catch. I really liked how Andrew asked Gemini CLI to help him polish up the UI at the end of the last video. Much like Andrew, I am far and away not a designer, so I'll show you a small but kind of powerful workflow that I've been using to help with that. I gave Stitch a screenshot of the original app UI and asked it for help with redesigning the app. So I went back and forth with Stitch and eventually landed on a design that I liked and exported it to HTML and CSS along with a screenshot. And I'm using anti-gravity as my main IDE these days, so I provided the built-in agent my exported HTML and screenshot and asked it to implement it in the workout companion. Again, I went back and forth with the agent a few times and voila! Now, not only do we have user input in our workout companion app, we've also got a fresh coat of paint too. All right, so that's how you can add interactivity to your generative UI-based user experiences. This is awesome because it allows you to build sophisticated interactive UIs that streamline the collaboration between your user and their agent. We'll keep working on the app, but in the meantime, I have some working out to do. So be sure to check the description below for links to learn more, and I'll see you next time. Colin, you didn't have to do all those workouts. Wait, Andrew, what do you mean I didn't have to do all those workouts?